is new every morning, never ceases. His mercies mm. never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. How amazing are these words. Some of the most poetic and encouraging words of the entire Bible. I mean, the basis of our beloved hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, comes not in the midst of a really joyful, happy time, but rather in the midst of the, the pits of despair. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Somehow, despite all of the pain, the author of Lamentations manages to sing. He realizes that he has hope and new power for living in his life. Because he knows that God loves him. You see, our friends may get sick, and they may get tired of our dysfunctional antics, they may stop returning our calls, but God will never do that to us. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Our spouses may divorce us and may cast us off like yesterday's newspapers, but not God. Our children may rebel against us and tell us that they never want to see us again but not the Lord. Our co-workers may abandon us and may leave us out to dry, but not God. God. Our boss may hate our guts, may throw us into the streets the first chance they get, but not God, because the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Our sisters and our brothers may stab us in our back and mess with our minds, but God would never do that to us. Our mothers, yes, even our mommies, May curse the day that we were born and wish that they had terminated their pregnancies, but not the Lord, because the steadfast love of the Lord never ends. We might come home feeling forsaken and abused and seek solace in our beloved pets, and our cat may hiss at us and our dog may lift its leg on us, but God won't turn his back on us. I don't care what you have done or what you haven't done. We could have robbed the bank, murdered our grandmother, taken the safety tags off of his mattress like I heard that Dennis Myers got did. <laughs> I don't care how bad it was. Society may have given up on us. Your psychologist may say that you are beyond repair. The world may have left you for dead. The church may damn you to hell. Political pollsters may even stop calling you. Now that's a frightening thought, right? <laughs> But the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. God won't give up on us. That's the one point message of today's sermon. Now don't get me wrong. The Lord may indeed discipline us just like Israel was being disciplined at this point in their history. He may indeed let us experience the consequences of our rebellion and it may hurt like Hades. But God's love will never give up on us. His mercies are new every morning. Every single day can be a fresh start for the children of God. And I don't know about you, but that's my good news to me. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. They can take it all away from us. Like they did in the author of Lamentations. Everything, everything was gone. But they can never take away the love of God. What then are we to say about these, these things? Asked the Apostle Paul, another man who had been through some hard times. If God is for us, who is against us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or peril or famine or nakedness? No, in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You know what, friends? If you know this, all of the rest of life is just details. Cancer, unemployment, divorce, breakups, natural disasters, Finals in school, car accidents, death 
It's all details. If you know this, and I mean if you know this in the bowels of your very existence, if you know that God loves you no matter what, then there isn't a thing that this world can throw at you that you cannot handle with grace and dignity and courage and hope. I read an article several years ago uh, by, written by a Presbyterian elder named Holly Mann Lockhart. At the time that she wrote this article, she was undergoing treatment for third and fourth stages of adrenal carcinoma of the ovaries. Her medical treatment had included the removal of her lymph glands, radiation, six months of chemotherapy. Complications included leg edema, back pain, the usual loss of appetite, nausea, fatigue, and weakness that goes with chemotherapy. If any of you have ever had cancer, you know the hell she was going through. I almost hesitate to tell you the title of the article that she wrote because you may be repulsed by it and you may want to shout out and say, it's a lie. But the title that she chose for her article was Blessed by Cancer. Blessed by Cancer, oh my goodness. Now, you may not call it that and I don't think I would have called it that and those of us who have had a loved one who's died from cancer probably wouldn't call it that. But she called it that, and I suppose she had a right to call it that because she was going through it. But she called it that because that was at least one aspect of her experience. In her article, she talks about the tremendous outpouring of cards, and calls, and visits, and food, and heart-to-heart -heart talks, and above all, the prayers that she and her husband received from family and from friends, and even from absolute, complete strangers, people that she never, ever met and never did meet. Of the prayers, she writes, quote, I compare them to a rising tide of care that has protected us from the rocks and the shoals of mortal illness. We have been given solace, strength beyond ordinary endurance, hope and trust when doubt sapped our energy and our power to reach out ourselves to others when circumstances seem to encourage a kind of a stunting ingrowth. For us, the prayers of others have encircled us with a new reality, substantial in nature, mysterious, but almost tactile. She's saying you could almost feel it. She concludes, would we have experienced any of these things, any other way in life. Maybe. But, she says, thanks be to God for this blessing of cancer and disease that threatens life as usual, but instead offers the beauty of life unusual. Truly, life more abundant. <coughs> now that's an amazing testimony. And I'm not saying that you should feel that way if you've gone through cancer, or that your loved ones who died of cancer but didn't feel that way were any less Christian because they didn't feel that way. But that is how she felt very hard. And I wonder if we might have more of her ability to sing in the storms of our lives if we would cling just a little bit closer to this great truth of lamentations, that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, His mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning, and God is faithful. And if we've got that in mind, nothing else can bring us to it. Maybe you've heard the story about the great German theologian Karl Barth. <coughs> who one day after giving his lecture was um, asked if there were any questions. And indeed, somebody came, one of his students raised his hand and said, said, Dr. Bart, what is the greatest, the most profound theological truth that you have ever encountered in your whole life? And Karl Barth stopped and he paused and he thought for a little while. He was a large and imposing man. He smoked a pipe, but he was a, a profound intellectual. He wrote Karl Barth's Dogmatics, a tin volume about literally two foot long, 
uh, work of theology. And Karl Barth sat and he thought and he said, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him run. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves you. His steadfast love for you will never cease. You can never do anything to stop, to get him to stop loving you. And I hope that you can hear that in worship this morning. I hope you can hear that in this place, a place dedicated to children, to children who do what? They trust, right? They believe because that's what they have to do. And that's what we have to do. Like we sang earlier, we are desperate, desperate for the Lord. And so we rely upon his love like children. And as you go through the ups and the downs of life, I hope that you will cling to this very simple truth. When you've screwed up yet again, and you don't know where to turn, hang on to that promise. Cling to it like a shipwrecked survivor clings to a life raft in a cold and stormy ocean. Because it is a life raft. It is a life preserver. It will preserve you no matter what befalls you. It will help you to sing in the storms. Great is God's faithfulness. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Precious Lord, teach us to cling to your love through the storms of life. Forgive us when we vainly grasp at the flimsy lifelines that the world tosses to us. Fill us with your love. Help us never to doubt. And give us faith to sing always, even in the storms of life. And all of God's people said together, Amen. 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 I invite you to stand.